Welcome back to another episode of the Rock Solid Sports Podcast. Today is Tuesday, July 30th, and the Olympics are here. Yeah, and I mean, in terms of gold medals, not doing so great, but hey, medals. in terms of the total, we're all over it. Uh, the MLB trade deadline ended just hours ago. Uh, NFL training camp started this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll talk about those a little bit. And at the end, movie reviews. Oh, yeah. And the Mount Rushmore of sports nicknames. That'll be fun. Let's do it. We're going to make it, baby. Welcome back to this week's episode of the Rock Solid Sports Podcast. Uh, we are brought to you by Slove. Uh, Slove is not just Colorado's next and up-and-coming clothing brand. It's also a clothing brand who aims to bring a moment or movement globally. When you wear a Slove piece, you're not just wearing a piece of clothing. You are elevating your style and representing what love looks like. Uh, go check them out. They have hoodies, t-shirts, hats, sweatshirts, sweatsuits, uh, anything you can find. Uh, stickers, keychains, all the above. Uh, go check them out on Instagram at slove.co, that is S-L-U-V dot C-O, or their website at slove.us, that is S-L-U-V dot U-S. All right, boys, well, the Olympics are here, and mm-hmm. the USA, we're all USA fans right now. Oh, yeah. Couldn't Everybody. be better. Yeah, oh, yeah. It, it's, we're really at our peak at the moment. Um, the only thing, like I said in the intro, is just the golds aren't really there. But in terms of total medals, we are clearing a lot of people. Like, I think the closest to us right now, just on here, it looks like is France at 18, but we have 26. Um, and that's probably just going to keep going up because uh, I don't think track has happened. Not yet. Um, gymnastics just got the gold today in their team event. I think there is solo stuff, individual as well. So we'll see what happens with that. But. We're kind of on a fast track right now to just kind of wrap things up. We've done really good, and if we don't win, we're getting second and third in almost everything, it feels like. Uh, women's rugby got bronze today. Good for big, them. Big, big. First that's time. Their, yeah, that's their best finish ever mm-hmm. in that. First time meddling. Yep. So that's huge. Uh, we're we're making our way up in the non-American sports, so that make, should make everyone feel a little scared. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, U.S. men's soccer today, they won, they won a game. Uh, we'll see. I mean – we know they just got that new head coach. Uh, this is the same. Is it the same coach that coaches this? Or I don't think. I don't know exactly. Yeah, I don't know. I, if I it's don't like a, know if we've even hired a new head coach yet. Now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, well, our men's national. Hey, maybe at this point we should keep it that way because every time I turn on TV, we're beating somebody <laughs> like three goals, which is yeah. interesting for soccer. Did, did, did you mention that was the under twenty three team or yeah, under twenty three? So that, that's mm. the under twenty three team. So maybe they have a coach like already. Yeah. In their in their you know yeah. team, but no, I totally agree. It's been awesome to watch so far. It does kind of suck that like the times. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, being in France, that some of these events are happening at like two thirty in the morning, and on you know weeknights in America, mm-hmm. uh, so I'm asleep for most of them. But uh, even today at work, uh, I got to watch gymnastics. I was watching swimming, mm-hmm. uh, like you mentioned, gymnastics got their their team dub, yep. team gold. Mm-hmm. Um, Simone Biles, um, Suni Lee, Jordan Chillis. I don't know if you pronounced that right. Uh, they kind of led us, uh, led the storm, performed great. Uh, Simone Biles, I know, was a little banged up too. Mm-hmm. So it was cool to see her, you know, out here because last time she was banged up, she just had to drop out. Yeah. So and I know that was also some mental stuff as well. But uh, it was awesome to see them get back on top. Like you said, they have more individual stuff coming up. Was a little disappointing seeing our swimming uh, kind of struggle yeah. because, you know, the years of Michael Phelps, Ryan Lochte are they're clearly yeah. over. No, yeah, we've definitely kind of started to flame out in that area, especially when like for me personally, I just I hear the name Katie Ledecky and I'm like, oh, she's gonna clear, mm-hmm. and then she gets third. She did clear one event though, seventeen yeah. seconds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, insane. But uh, yeah, no, I, you're not wrong. I mean, with the Michael Phelps air kind of being gone, it's kind of like we're kind of just even with everybody now. I wouldn't say that we're worse than everybody, but I'd say we're right on par with like most people now. Um, we're just not as dominant in that as we used to be, but uh, we're still solid enough, and we, we're getting those medals. And realistically. It's awesome to see your country get the gold, but I think all that really matters is the total medals that you get. Mm-hmm. So 
that's that's what really matters and just making sure you're in that like for instance fencing yeah you know having uh american win the gold and silver in that event was huge awesome it's, to see it's because uh lee Kiefer mm-hmm. uh dapped up steph curry yeah so he transitioned some of that magic the powers yep and so that that transferred over and we're seeing success there i haven't kept track on ping pong yet but i know table tennis as they might call it in the olympics but I know Anthony Edwards was there. So if he's yep. transferring those powers over to the, the table mm-hmm. tennis people, I think we might get a couple medals. Dude, yeah. And I was thinking about that when I was watching it. If I was in the Olympics and my sport wasn't going on, I'd oh, be, I'd every be trying to see every single event that I could. No matter what it is. Yeah. And uh, I think we I think we won uh, beach volleyball men's too. Mm-hmm. Uh, Chase, Chase Budinger used to be yeah. a former NBA player, yeah. uh, actually medaled uh, in men's volleyball and mm-hmm. beach volleyball, which is, again, awesome to see. It's just uh, – it's a total different time of year when you have literally almost every single like sport or activity going mm-hmm. on at once. And it's just so random Yeah. where the other morning, uh, I think we talked about this, just watching USA play against Serbia, which we'll talk about a little bit. And then, you know, you blink for a second or, you know, maybe take a nap, you wake up and on TV is uh, equestrian or yeah. uh, surfing, surfing in <laughs> an entirely different country. Yeah. Just yeah. totally different stuff. So, um, but yeah, the basketball men's basketball so far, mm-hmm. we're only through one game. Uh, by the time this comes out, we'll be through two games. Mm-hmm. Uh, USA plays South Sudan tomorrow. But uh, the USA did beat Serbia the other day. Um, mm-hmm. Not Nikola Jokic's fault. No, not at all. I mean, the <laughs> splits between him being on the floor and him being on the bench are insane. I think it was 26. A plus zero to minus 26. Yep. Yeah, so when he was on the floor, I believe the score was 81 to 81. And then when he's off the floor, I think I want to say 29 to 3. Yeah. I mean, that's just... But, I mean, that's what you expect from a team like Serbia who doesn't have star that, power. Ma- that much star power. And then you got USA who's literally benching a guy who's considered one of the best in the NBA currently. So, uh, yeah, the, I think our predictions, I'd say we all predicted that, that they're going to kind of turn it on now that they're actually in the actual group play stage and they're actually doing stuff to win a medal. I think we all predicted they were going to turn it on, and I think they are currently. I think they have really kind of found their groove with each other as well. So that's that's dangerous. I mean, they could really beat a team really, really bad. I have a I, feeling. Like, yeah, that's going to be Puerto Rico. I, I think believe South at the Sudan's going to get that forty-three and a half spread this time <laughs> yeah. too. Like, I think they're going to they're going to get it this time as well. I did see that spread went to minus thirty, so they're mm-hmm. went from forty-three and a half to thirty. But obviously, you know, the betting, the books still think they're going to win by yeah. a large margin. Well, I mean, and also USA is going to walk away with the medal in this. I mean, the, the gold medal. Yeah. Uh, most likely the gold. Yeah. But, there's, but there's literally, I think, three teams right now that in my mind can do it. And yeah. it's USA, Canada, and Germany. Germany up there. I think those are the only three that are going to really be able to compete with anybody or going to be able to beat people pretty solidly and keep moving through all of this. So, I mean, we'll see. You never know. But yeah. USA is probably going to walk away with a gold unless they, like, have a fight or yeah. something. <laughs> a couple of notes I had from that game, it was – Kevin Durant, first of all, yeah, amazing. Like I, I don't know what it is with him in the Olympics, but he is the all-time leading scorer for mm-hmm. the U.S. basketball team in the Olympics. He was amazing. On you know, mm-hmm. he's just one of those guys. Like literally, he just stepped on the court after just practices. No, not even games yeah. with these guys. Just practices, and he stepped on the court instantly. I mean, in the first half, he went eight for eight. I think with twenty-one points. Mm-hmm. I think he finished with twenty-three, uh, eight for nine, something like that at the end of the game. It's just incredible how yeah. much of a talent he is, and he came off the bench for the U.S. Insane. Uh, another note: Jason Tatum didn't play. I know you mentioned that. Mm-hmm. Kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> kind of funny. Uh, Twitter had a field day with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, kind of funny. Joel Embiid stinks. Like, yeah. act like reeks right now. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if he's banked up. I know uh, it's you know he's kind of always banked up, and he kind of finished the playoffs you know, a little injured, but. Really funny to see just Jokic just cook him, and yeah. he was the only player on the U.S. basketball team that finished up with a plus minus of a minus eight. He's only eight. person to finish in a minus. It's them FIBA rules, bro. Yeah, he can flop his way to the free throw line all the time. Mm-hmm. Can't do it. So I, again, this was at like nine fifteen in the morning on a Sunday. Yeah. So like barely just waking up. Yeah, and you just look, turn on the TV, and I go to Twitter and. I, I'm just seeing Jason Tatum and Joel Embiid get cooked. It, yeah. it felt right again. It felt <laughs> like it felt like home again. So, for someone who's not like me, like not too well known in the FIBA rules, what are those that make that so different than the NBA? So, there's a couple that are notable. Um, I'd say two that really don't matter for at least what we're co- talking about. Three point line moved in a little. Defensive three seconds is no longer a thing, which might affect Embiid's game a little. 
Um, you can take if the ball's on the rim, you can hit it off, and there's no goaltending. Yeah. And then the one I think that most affects him is just the foul calls. Like it's way more physical. Way more physical. The refs don't really bite in or feed yeah. into the the yeah. NBA no, just look at flops crazy. and stuff. Yeah. yeah, they just kind of look at you and are like, "What the hell are you doing?" Yeah, it's <laughs> yeah. dumb. So I think that's really it. And the three seconds I think also doesn't really help Embiid because mm-hmm. you know you could just build a wall right there and yeah, he's not getting no. So I mean, it was just again funny to see. I I'm an Embiid hater, so like proudly uh, and publicly. So shameless. Yeah, she, she plays shameless basketball, and we're seeing that on literally the biggest stage of the world. Yeah. So, uh, like Noah Lyle said. Uh, Joel Embiid shouldn't be called a world champion. <laughs> Even if he wins the gold medal, he shouldn't be called a world champion because technically he should be playing for Cameroon or France anyway. But yep. none of my business, I guess. Yeah. Uh, and then speaking about France, they played today against Japan, I believe. Mm-hmm. They were down by four with 10 seconds left. The, they, they were supposed to beat this team by like 17 and a half. I think the books had it. Uh, they were up by, or they down by four with 10 seconds left. Don't know how the game ended, but somehow they forced overtime. Ended up winning by, I think, six or ten, something like that. So, like, really close. And rigged. Fucked for, yeah. Rigged. yeah. Rigged for winning. They win the first gold medal of the, the whole Olympics, and yeah. now they're yeah. forcing games that shouldn't go in overtime <laughs> and overtime. Yeah, we see it. I, I, I don't know how it ended, but uh, just kind of interesting to see when you have a generational talent like Wemby mm-hmm. over there, and they have, like, you know, three other solid NBA players minimum on the team yeah. in Gobert, Batum, and uh, Evan Fournier. Yeah. So, and they're playing against Japan, who mm-hmm. – Realistically, you have Rui Hachimura, and, and then I couldn't name. And the shortest player in the Olympics. Yeah, like or in the basketball. Five foot four. Yeah, he's Damn. five four. <laughs> yeah. You see, the, there's a crazy picture of women Yama right next to him, like running past him. There's it's a picture. We'll, we'll put it on the screen right now. Does uh, it look like Brittany Grinder going against these other? It's yeah. exactly yeah. what yeah. it looked like. Exactly what it looked like. So how's that going, women's basketball? Uh, they've only played one game so far. They I believe them, didn't they, they also played Japan, and they mm-hmm. beat them by the same Third. margin. Uh, the USA beat Serbia, which I believe was like 26. So. Damn. Yeah, um, they'll be fine. US yeah. Asia Wilson is going to kill every other country. Yeah. Yeah. She's ridiculous. So, um, But, yeah, I don't know. There's obviously, like, Olympics are just going on. Like, yeah. as Coco Goff getting eliminated was a real big yeah. shocker to me. That, one of the flag bearers. Not our flag bearer, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Uh, and then I guess the only other really notable thing I've seen so far is uh, Djokovic and Nadal matched up mm-hmm. maybe for the final time, definitely the final time at yeah. the Olympics. Yeah. And uh, Nadal lost, so. Uh, I I think it's also really funny. Wait, it was in Nadal or Federer? It, no, was, it I, was Nadal. Who? Uh, Rafael Nadal? Yeah. Wasn't he playing with Alcaraz or whatever? Okay, so maybe it was Federer. Yeah. I don't know. Whoever won, I, I just listened to part of my TikTok about this. Whoever, whoever wins the French Open all the time, which I don't know what surface that's played on. Mm-hmm. It's not Djokovic, though. They're not from, I think, so I think it might be Federer. It's whoever from Spain, I believe. Yeah. He was one of the people in the opening ceremony, like representing like all of the Olympics, mm-hmm. and they thought it was like really weird because he's not French. Yeah. But then, they people got to the bottom of it, and they think it's just because he wins the French Open. It was yeah. Nadal every year, so it was Nadal. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah, Nadal was just like a part of this huge Olympic ceremony for only being the winner of the French Open all the time and not <laughs> being French. Yeah. So really weird. Let's not get too deep into the opening ceremony because I know yeah. a lot of controversy going around that right now, but. I was literally listening, just listening to a podcast about it. So, uh, yeah, let's stay away from that. So <laughs> We can talk about Celine Dion, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Awesome. We, we could always talk about Celine Dion. Oh, awesome. Go. After seeing, like, those interviews, too, of her explaining how she's, like, losing her ability to sing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then watching that, I got tears in my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. So, but again, the Olympics are literally ongoing, and there's probably events happening as we speak. So Goes to August, what? Third or sixth yeah, or something I like that. I say the sixth. Yeah, so... A lot of Olympics we played. I think we'll talk about it next week as well. Mm-hmm. Or actually, you guys will talk about it. I won't be here, so yeah, um, you guys will be in track uh, or in charge of talking about that. So <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Other than that, I don't really have any other notes on the Olympics other than it's been entertaining. Oh, I will say my one note is this has to be the best time of year for unemployed people. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah. just get to sit on their couch and watch this shit all day. Yeah, it's it's like uh, it's like a leap year for guys who can't do anything but watch sports, who like us. Yeah, uh, it's just you know every four years you get to watch random sports at any hour of the day that you want. It's I, there's just literally people I'm seeing on Twitter, TikTok, whatever, or my friends. I guess not my friends, but just other people I know. Mm-hmm. Just like watching these events in the middle of the day, and I'm like, don't you guys have like work or something? Like, yeah. Whether I know people work late, people work early, I get that. But like, I'm watching 
people even say like, oh, this is the best time of year for unemployed people. No, yeah. I, I mean, couldn't e- be more jealous. Even for certain employed people because, you know, where I work, there's multiple TVs yeah. all over the place. And today there was nobody in there. So I sat in the middle of the restaurant and watched swimming. Some people are like a good 45 minutes without moving. That's awesome. Yeah. (laughs) I think think I'll be able to do that a little bit tomorrow. So You see Michael Phelps today? They just reminded me of that. All I do is win. He said on the Pat McAfee show, they were talking about like passing the torch on pretty much to the next uh, generation of swimmers. And he was like, hey, all I do is win. He's like, I can officially say that now. (laughs) He's like, I didn't say it during my career. (laughs) Yeah. No, I I did. Isn't he the most most decorated? Gold medals ever. Yeah. And 23. Simone Biles became the most decorated uh, gymnast ever today. So, hell yeah. Pretty awesome for the U.S. Um, USA, USA. So we got to get a hot dog competition in here so Joey Chestnut can yeah, get back yeah, in here. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's what we have to petition for the next Olympics. But <laughs> They can take them out of America, but we're going to put them into the world. Yeah. <laughs> put them on the world stage now. All right. Well, I guess we'll move on to the MLB trade deadline. Not too crazy of a trade deadline this no. year. I know in the past couple of years we've seen guys like uh, DeGrom get moved, uh, Juan Soto get moved. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't say there was anybody to that stature no. getting moved this year. I think but the only person that could have been in that stature could have gotten moved was Luis Robert. And he didn't even and get he moved. Didn't move. So uh, I guess if you want to start by talking about, I'm guessing, your new favorite addition. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, we're adding back some of the guys from the 2021 roster that won it all. Uh, we got Jorge Soler the, the, back. The Braves, he's speaking. The about. Braves, yes. The uh, Braves got Jorge Soler and Luke Jackson both played on that team. We did lose uh, Tyler Matzik. Um, that stinks, but like I don't know, he hasn't been what he was when we were making that run. So I guess it's all right. Um, they got out and went what I said they needed to go get, which was just a big bat that can start bringing some runs and maybe get us a little heat. I mean, he's having. I'm pretty sure he's having a pretty good year. Yeah, he's he is. So that that was pretty good for us. Um, another notable one to me that I think is interesting is Jazz Chisholm to the Yankees. Uh, and I don't think it's interesting because he plays for the Yankees now. I think it's interesting because we might need to start uh, looking at Aaron Judge's bat <laughs> yeah. because Jazz Chisholm never hits home runs, <laughs> like ever. And he hit two. And he hit two in one game yeah. using Aaron Judge's bat. One was off a position player, and I think the media forgot to mention that. But still. Agreed. Yeah. But, yeah, I know uh, Jazz Chisholm, really weird. That I know why they didn't retire uh, Alex Rodriguez's number. Mm-hmm. And Joey Gallo wore it, like, two years ago before New, yeah. York, New York almost. What number is it again? 13. Yeah. So, uh, and before, you know, ja- Joey Gallo wore it a couple years ago before New York almost, like, killed him in the literally in the city of the Bronx mm-hmm. um, before he got traded to the Dodgers yeah. in mid-year. But now Jazz Chisholm just gets to wear 13 yep. for – that's just so wrong. Like yeah. I, I, like <laughs> Alex Rodriguez, I don't care how you ended. Yeah, that's just like something as an owner that that's just petty to me. Mm-hmm. But uh, I do agree. Jorge Soler, great pickup for uh, the Braves. A little jealous. Yeah. Um, well, real quick, uh, what do the what do the Rockies do? Uh, yeah, absolutely nothing. Okay, absolutely. just not. We moved a lot of a lot of prospects around. There you go. Just um, about fifty of them. <laughs> <laughs> And besides that, they didn't do shit. I didn't, I don't think anybody really expected that to. No. But um, you know what? I just want to see something. Just um, something. Real real cool story about Jorge Soler. I don't know if you knew this. I just read this on Twitter a couple hours ago. Um, Jorge Soler gets traded back to the Braves. If you go to, what's their park's name? Truist, Truist Park? Truist Park yeah. If you go to Truist Park and you go and look and where all their trophies and rings are and uh, MVPs, all that, there's one ring that sits there from the 2021 World Series, cha- uh, World Series championship. It is Jorge Soler's. Yeah. He donated it to them to show off. While all the other players on the roster have them, yeah. he kept his there to show off. Yeah. And full circle moment, he gets to come back and yeah. be in the same park that uh, he kind of donated the ring. So I thought that was cool. Yeah, and I do feel like we're gonna hang on to him this time. I don't, I yeah. don't think we're gonna let him run away like we did last time. I think that was kind of. I know we couldn't have both him and Jock Peterson mm-hmm. on the same team, but. I was like, we should have kept one of them around, yeah. and I think Jorge is going to stick around for sure. I know Jack Peterson is so sad. No, dude, yeah, just checking his phone. He's like, they, <laughs> they want me still, right? <laughs> They're going to trade for me, right? We just might be them. <laughs> no, <laughs> they didn't. Um, my, obviously, favorite uh, trades of the deadline, uh, I guess the big one for the Dodgers was getting Jack Flaherty from the Detroit Tigers literally minutes before the trade deadline ended. Uh, he's a great starting pitcher. Uh, I think he's like a 2.85 ERA this year, which mm-hmm. has been great. Yeah. Um, he's was the ace for the Tigers. The Tigers 
suck, obviously. So uh, they were kind of <laughs> easy to you know get their hands off of him. Michael Kopech, a uh, great relief pitcher for the White Sox, uh, added him to the bullpen this week. And then we traded a couple of guys just for depth. I think Ahmed Rosario, Tommy Edmond, and Kevin Kiermeyer. None of them really playing great this year. I guess Ahmed Rosario is playing better than he was last year when we traded for him. Traded for him last year. He leaves. We traded for him again this year at the deadline. Uh, really weird. But uh, all of them are really just, I guess, depth guys. And for how many injuries that the Dodgers have right now, mm -hmm. uh, pretty cool that we kind of got, you know, a lot of more bats in and a couple good pitchers. Uh, that we don't have to worry about the injuries that we're kind of dealing with right now. Yeah. And it gives our manager, Dave Roberts, like a chance to not really screw up as much as he seems to do lately, <laughs> uh, as much as I love the guy. Uh, so I'm excited for that. The Dodgers are proving that when they have Shohei and the promise they made to Shohei mm -hmm. was, you know, <laughs> we're going to build a team around you. And yep. I think they proved it. So. Yeah, and also, I mean, right now, you know, injuries being definitely a factor. Uh, it's one of those things where – you know, you're kind of relieving that pressure off of some of these guys, you know, as you keep going on for a little bit, uh, you know, until you can get everybody back and healthy. This is a pretty good way to kind of fill that lineup with some studs that can uh, make the time pass a little faster. Yeah. Also, Eddie Rosario coming back to Atlanta. I know he did that a little bit ago, but another 2021 guy who was, who was on the Braves for a while, he got traded last year or signed last year, I don't remember, but – He's back, and that's pretty pretty, pretty good. Yeah. Um, the only other couple ones I saw was uh, obviously Randy Rosarena going to the Mariners. Mm -hmm. That was big for them. Uh, Justin Turner also going to the Mariners. Uh, Dodger legend Justin Turner. Yep. Uh, I hope to see him in a Dodger uniform one day managing. So uh, happy for him. Uh, Jesse Winker went to the Mets. Um, he had a good year like two years ago. Maybe he can get it going, be on a new team. And then today I saw there was also one more. It was Jazz. No, I mean, yeah, Jazz Chisholm too. But Tanner Scott, he was a closer. I do not remember where, but he got traded to the Padres. He's actually really good. Uh, I was reading his stats earlier. I forget what he came from. That's going to make me so mad. But, uh, yeah, so San Diego Padres get a new closer. I think they already have, like, a couple decent uh, relief Mayor pitchers. Miami. He the came Marlins. to the Marlins too. So the Marlins just traded everybody. Yeah. They traded their whole team practically. Yep. Them in Tampa, so – but, I mean, when you're in a division with, like, the Braves and the Phillies, like, it's so hard to compete with both those teams, even when the Braves are not playing as well. So, it's, I don't know, sometimes you got to make some bold moves to kind of – Even the Mets. Yeah, well differentiate yourself. So, um, I'm excited to see the Dodgers play the Padres tonight on national television. So, I will be tuned into that ASAP. Uh, we'll be good to see – Couple new guys, maybe. I don't know. I don't think all of them are there, but I know Tommy Edmond is already in San Diego. Uh, I think Ahmed Rosario is probably already there too. So uh, we won't get to see Jack Flaherty for a couple games, obviously, because he's a starting pitcher. But mm -hmm. maybe even Kopech tonight. So I'll be excited. Um, <laughs> I guess we kind of already said it, but any notes on the trade deadline? Maybe for you. <laughs> Bro, when I tell you they didn't do anything, they didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, like, they didn't they, do anything. Like not a thing. They were talking about a catcher. I remember it's like Quentin, something. I can't remember his name, but they didn't do nothing. It's a yeah. Typical Rocky talk, you know. There's not much they can do. No, that's yeah. yeah that's they the they could thing. sell. But yeah, they, the team. They've been selling. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah well, they could <laughs> sell a team, I guess. But uh, no, I mean, like they could sell some not of their yet. guys. Like, and they don't have to keep all of them. No, I don't. I, no, I don't know. There's Obviously, something's not working. But the, the entire organization. It sucks too, because I feel like there are a couple. Pretty we solid have, yeah. players on that team. Tovar has been doing good. Mm -hmm. Brenton Doyle has been playing really well. Ryan we McMahon. Ryan McMahon Even playing like well. Chris Bryant, who's not like even that yeah. as good as he used to be, that name does yeah, hold weight. It does. So There's one other guy who like it's him and Brenton Doyle who have the mo like our top two in the out of the five guys since. The Rodgers? Brenton Rodgers? Yeah, I think zero. They're like, but they have the most home runs since like June 6th or something. So yeah. we, have, we have good Pretty players, good. but just overall as a team – we are complete and utter dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. We're going to clip that one for sure. <laughs> it's just the truth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Um, all right. Well, since we don't have any more news on the MLB, probably won't until October yeah. at, this, at this point. So mm -hmm. maybe no more uh, MLB talk until the playoffs. And yeah. you never know what will happen. Some True. Cra something crazy could happen. Yeah. Maybe um, they find maybe. Shohei illegal gambling. That would be. Oh, wait. They, they already tried to do that. Yeah. Maybe Rocky start winning. Maybe. Yeah. 
Huh? October? No. <laughs> Do you October, smell it bitch. in the air? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. All right, well, we will move on to the NFL, and that's kind of why I'm wearing these these pajama pants. Uh, these are more of Christmas pajamas. Mm-hmm. When this podcast com- comes out on Thursday, it's going to feel a little bit like Christmas morning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because football yep. is kind of back. Yeah. Kind of. Mm-hmm. The Hall of Fame game mm-hmm. is on Thursday. It's obviously we're going to turn on the TV for about – 20 seconds yep mm-hmm. and we're gonna watch the Tyler bacon we're gonna watch yeah <laughs> we're gonna watch the very beginning of this game and we're gonna quickly realize to turn that shit off <laughs> yeah. yep. because no one notable will be playing yep. but just to see the football field yeah mm-hmm. just to see the helmets yep. the gloves the the donkeys the officials or the zebras my bad <laughs> the zebras uh yeah. couple coaches mm-hmm. we'll see D'Amico ryan's obviously on one side and who they play they play cleveland or cincinnati uh, Chicago. Chicago. Yeah. Mm, so Chicago and Texans. Matt Eberflus, D'Amico Ryans. We'll get to see them. Um, I think they're implementing uh, coach interviews on the sideline. Really? This year. Mm. Probably a terrible idea. Yeah, probably. Those are the last people you want to talk to in the middle of a football game, yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially while a drive is going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> or I guess during like middle of the quarter. So I, that even sounds worse. But yeah. yeah, so they're supposed to be implementing that this year. That's going to be interesting. But yes, the NFL is kind of back. We got a bunch of training camp news coming out. Mm-hmm. Some bad, some good, some great. Yeah. Um and some worse. So anything that you saw that you found exciting, interesting? Uh you know, I, I I think it's so early right now that I'm just now starting to hear back about a lot of things. Uh it's gonna be interesting to see some of these quarterback battles out of some of these teams like with the Steelers. I think Russell will start. I do too. But who knows how long that lasts because it's not like Denver where they're paying him a, a, a buttload of money and there's nobody behind him. Yeah. They're not paying him anything and there is a solid, like, known quarterback behind him. If he starts to play bad, they will not hesitate to pull him, I don't I think. give it, like, yeah. three to four weeks. Yeah, and I think also, like, all these teams that are like, you know, Sam Darnold's going to start. Don't worry about that. No. J.J. McCarthy's going to start for that football team. It may be week two, but he's yeah. going to start for that football yeah. team. Because Sam Darnold has already played and proven that he is ass. So he's not going to lead you to anything. Um, But I think it's just a lot of questions about who's going to be good. How is Burrow going to return and play? Uh, Falcons, from my side of things, like I'm very interested. I I think the Falcons could easily be a 10-11 win team as much as I think they could be a 7 win team. So this is the best time of year to think your team could be a 10 win team. Exactly. Yeah. So I mean the only positive for the Falcons is that they have such an easy schedule that it is possible that they could do that. I mean they played the worst one of the worst divisions yeah. six times a year. So yeah. No, I I agree that uh it's just been so exciting to see just the little things like like you mentioned the quarterback uh battles. Well, I'll let you talk about that one. I don't know if you saw that today, but uh, a couple of the notes I saw uh Quentin Johnson blows still <laughs> um <Yeah>. he is <laughs> let me see if i can find this read to you real quick but there's like literal just tweets i'm seeing like on my whole feed of just quentin johnson dropping balls in training camp um so that was really funny it's literally a tweet said uh hopefully we could put this up on the youtube too it says my timeline right now and it's a pie chart and it's just 50 50 and it's hateful po- political tweets and Quentin Johnson drop balls. <laughs> it's just 50-50. But you know who's not been asked in that training camp? Lad McConkey. Lad McConkey. Mm-hmm. I have seen Absolute that as well. dog out there. I have seen that as well. So, um, But yeah, I guess if, real quick, uh, I guess Colts news, really nothing big. Michael Pittman's gotten in like two fights. Pretty cool. Fire. Uh, one of our defensive ends, Torres Achilles, mm-hmm. not cool. Not fire. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's everything out of Colts camp so far. So yeah. uh, we want to just stay in the middle. We don't want to get too high. You don't want to get mm-hmm. too low. If we take one good news, one bad news, you know, just kind of deal with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it does suck that we lost, I think, our leading uh, sack man last year. I think he led our team in sacks. So that <laughs> sounded crazy. <laughs> 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 you, you get what I meant. Um, but, yeah, and then uh, Judon, I saw that in the Patriots training camp, Matt Judon and their new coach, Jared Mayo, kind of getting into it. Uh, Judon's not practiced yet. He's just been sitting there uh, waiting for a new deal, I guess. But, um, yeah, I guess the big news out of Broncos training camp. I don't know if you saw this today. The depth chart, the suggested yes. depth chart? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I saw it. I it did not see it. What devastating. Is it? Stidham at one, Nick's at two, Zach Wilson three. No way. Yep. Yep. That's that. It said if the season started today, that's the tri- that's the depth chart. 
insane. Uh, I, okay, Brandon Albright. That's gonna did last as long as <clears throat> a dissolvable diaper. Benjamin that Albright. Not gonna yeah, work, yeah, yeah, Benjamin Albright did tweet that. So I mean, yeah, uh, he's kind of been shaky about his takes. Yeah. But Sean Payton was asked if Zach Wilson was gonna get any reps with the number one off, like with the one group, and he said, "We'll see." It's so no. And he <laughs> said, "Stidham and uh, Bo Nix are definitely getting reps with I, the first." What the first I've heard team. is it's a definite two-person battle right now. Yeah, and I've I also d- seen that. Before that tweet, I didn't know who, but now I'm absolutely distraught that that's. And if Stidham's starting right now, I have absolutely no faith in Bo no, Nix. That is that's just stupid. You got a guy who like was a quarterback on a team that beat the Chiefs last year, and then you got a guy who doesn't know his left from right hand. Yeah, I just <laughs> it's like, what are you doing? Start the start the rookie, and then if he starts yeah. sucking, you have a known well backup to be able to come in who has played in big games. To we play. have nothing to lose at this point. Sean Payton's ego is going to be the death of your team. Yeah, yeah, we have nothing to lose. Like we, I think we're we already have the worst roster that everyone has said. We have mm-hmm. the worst roster in the league. I think we're projected like five wins. I don't I don't know, man. I saw a video today. Somebody uh, guessed your record for the year. Is that guy who does it really well, or whatever his name is? Uh, he said you guys are getting ten wins. This ten? <laughs> yeah. Okay. He also had you on a four-run stretch beating the Saints, the Chiefs, the Panthers, and there was another. Oh, the Raiders. Yeah, they'll, they'll, all of them they'll maybe maybe get two wins out of that. Yeah, then I could see Saints, the Raiders, and Panthers. Out. And Saints is going to be like you. It would have to be the best game of the season for mm-hmm. the Broncos. If, if Sean Payton's ego is going to get in the way, he definitely won't beat the Saints. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he'll do something to mess up the roster. We'll see. We'll see. It's early. I mean, what we're in week one or two of training camp, and that's week what one. the immediate look is, which is not not an immediate good look. But we have like four more weeks of training yeah, camp too. Exactly. So three more. Weeks. I, also, no, you go real quick. I was just going to say I would. I see Bo Nix starting, and like you said, even if it's week two or week three, like he's probably going to play the majority of the reps for that team. Yeah. Um, where the hell is Justin Simmons going? Is anybody? Uh, he was at Family Sports uh, at the driving range uh, two days ago, which is ironically right next to Broncos training camp. If anybody knows where those two places are located, next to each other during day. training camp, he's going to pull a Dennis Schroeder, isn't he? And just miss all a training camp and come back and t- turn down a very large sum of money and then come back for a noticeably less amount of money. He might, he might. I would be okay with that. Um, well, we, I'm sure you would. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's gonna take a good deal to come to Indy. I don't know. I, I'm surprised I've that he's not been signed, which is a good point. I didn't even think about. I mean, that. like the NFL, like news, NFL.com, whatever. The two names I see are the Eagles and Cowboys. Mm-hmm. But why not just go get them? Like yeah. I, that's what I don't understand. Like training camps starting up, yeah. it'd be a weird time to bring in somebody like in the beginning of the year. Mm. I, like bringing somebody in the middle of the year is weird. Bringing somebody halfway through training camp is also weird. Yeah, because you probably have a couple of safeties that are like thinking they're gonna get that spot, and then in walks one of the best safeties <laughs> in the NFL. Yeah. yeah, maybe they're just waiting for you know some. I don't. I'm not hoping injury, but like you know, some guys get hurt in training camp. Maybe the first safety to go down. Mm-hmm. First call is going to be to Justin Simmons. So, yep. yeah. I saw the Bills sign Kareem Jackson today. I don't know if they Crazy. had a choice mm-hmm. between like <laughs> why, why did they try to go get Justin yeah. Simmons? You know, I, don't, mm-hmm. I know they play kind of two yeah. different safety spots, but both plug Bronco and play. Legends. Plug and play. Yeah, Bronco Legends. Mm-hmm. Uh, last note I had from NFL training camp. I guess two, last two notes. Uh, one really funny Jim Harbaugh quote. It is Jim. Yeah. Jim is on the Chargers now, right? Mm-hmm. Or is that John? Oh, this will never be good. Jim is Jim. It's John. John's on the hardball or on the Chargers. John, John <laughs> John's is, on the hardball. No, baby. Is no. on the hardballs. Jim is on the Chargers. John is on the Ravens. I just confirmed. No. Yeah, yeah. I just, okay. I just confirmed. You're it. right. Um, Jim they Harbaugh. Look the exact same. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Harbaugh's quote uh, from opening day of training camp. He compared it to childbirth. Quote unquote. It was like coming out of the womb. He said. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's so crazy. He, that is so football. I've guy. I've been loving the videos of him like pushing the sleds with the players yeah. too. Like he's a very much so a players coach. Yeah, I and love seeing the, those videos. Yeah, it's it's he might he's one of those guys who's been in the NFL, been successful, been in college, been successful, and I think he's gonna merge it with the Chargers. Uh, I don't know how they'll play. I mean, the Chargers are always a question mark going into the year. We don't know because Justin Herbert is an insane talent. But you never know how the hit, the team around him is going to play, and now that he doesn't have uh, somebody who's brain dead <laughs> calling his plays for him, he might actually be successful. Yeah, <laughs> I hate that I have to hate him. Yeah, no, I, sad. Yeah, I don't really hate. You. I don't hate him, but like I, I just will never be able to root for him until he leaves. I guess my add on to that is, like you said, watching these coaches do these drills is so so much fun. Oh yeah, uh, it seemed Vrabel 
just run like I found out a couple weeks ago listening to part of my take that he was actually on the Brown staff didn't know that until that interview mm-hmm. and then seeing him run with like Jameis Winston awesome seeing Dan Campbell do yeah. like 30 drop burpees downs. yeah 30 drop downs just yeah. to do him mm-hmm. is incredible Jim Harbaugh like you said uh, it's just awesome to see it just football so back it's back and we're so close baby so, so close it's this Thursday we had the Hall of Fame game and then I think in two weeks not this following Saturday not this one but the next Saturday I think a preseason like week one maybe it's either that week or the week after yeah. so like we are so close and that's mm-hmm. only three weeks of preseason this yeah, year and then one by week in between August week three. 8th is August 8th is yep. the first preseason game? Preseason week one. <laughs> so that's literally next Saturday. It's not this next Saturday. Thursday. Next Thursday. Next Thursday. Oh August 8th, we got Carolina playing the pa- or Patriots, and then Detroit playing New York. My heart beating so fast. Yeah. Yeah, Ooh. this is awesome. Uh, 5 p.m. both games start. <laughs> oh, yeah. I saw that. College is close, too. Yeah. yeah. God. Yeah. God. <laughs> <laughs> Football. 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 Shout out Pat McAfee. Um, last note I had on the NFL, DJ Moore today got – uh, a very large extension, uh, largest yeah. in franchise history for the Chicago Bears. Four years, 110 million, 82.6 guaranteed. He is now the seventh highest paid quarterback, or er, <laughs> quarterback, <laughs> seventh <laughs> highest paid wide receiver in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, pretty cool. I don't. I'm not saying he's undeserving of it. That's a lot of money, and he has played excellent for yeah. the Bears. So yeah. I'm not saying he's undeserving of it, but that is a crazy amount of money, and the fact that he's the seventh highest paid wide receiver kind of crazy not too crazy but uh good for him yeah i mean i think it's one of those things where he's a guy where obviously it hurts to give any player that amount of money but at the end of the day i think you do walk away from it being feeling okay about it like that's not like a jordan love situation where you're giving a lot of money to somebody and you're like we'll see like you know what dj moore's gonna do and so i don't know I, i i think he's worth it but we'll see I'm excited. When we do our NFL preview, we're going to break down predictions by divisions, mm-hmm. playoffs, awards. It's going to be awesome. A whole this episode. podcast is going to go into full-fledged football mode. Football comes around. Yeah, it's it's going to be exciting. Wild. So the NFL preview, uh, we'll try to do it maybe the week before the season. So I think that will be the last week of August. Yeah, it's the first week. Of the, so the week before so we go to California will probably be the NFL preview because we will be out there for the first week of the NFL season. Week mm-hmm. one, September 4th. That Thursday starts. Mm-hmm. And then 6th, yeah. Yep, yep. And I think college starts September 1st, 2nd, something like that. So oh, when week zero. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows when week oh, yeah. zero starts. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we'll be tuned in for that too. So are you pulling that up real quick or – NCAA? Yeah. Yeah. I got to find you. They make it real easy. We go into college sports. <laughs> and we got to go into We got to get the fantasy football rolling around, too. Yeah. No, it's coming time to do some drafts. You kind of got to wait until the last week of preseason, though. For sure. You never know. It's you got to get them all set up and ready. Agrees. Agreed. I think I, I mentioned it to you. I think the best uh, – if I know a couple people that we play fantasy football with, we'll August, be listening to this. August twenty fourth, week one, college football. Oh my god, less than a month. Which away. I mean, that's that's like all the week games, right? It's like where we have all the blowouts. Week and zero. Then, yeah. yeah, and then week, then so like September third through seventh. There's a couple of good games week one though. Uh, Texas A and M, Notre Dame, I believe. Uh, there's there's a couple of them. So we'll have to, we'll we'll get a college football preview too. Yeah. No worries about that. Yeah. But uh, real quick, last note. Yeah, I know a couple people, fantasy football, will listen to this. Let me know if it's a good idea. Fantasy football, last two people, punishment, 15-minute comedy sets each. Mm. And everybody that doesn't lose has to write one joke for them that they have to say Okay. in public. I like it. I like it. So. In pu- how public? Pick a dive bar. I bet. Rent it out. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. But, all righty, well, let's get into the ad read. And we have a movie review, a couple movie reviews. And um, the Mount Rushmore of sports nicknames on the other side. Let's get it. All right, exciting news, guys. We have a new sponsor, Verb Energy Bars, simple, natural energy and protein bars. Uh, They have flavors like carrot cake, chocolate chip cookie dough, French toast, cookies and cream, uh, anything you could really think of. Uh, Brand new product. You guys should go check it out. Uh, Make sure you guys use our code, uh, ROCKSOLID, all capitals, to get up to 30% off. Uh, Use ROCKSOLID. Uh, all capitals again get 30 percent off uh you guys are gonna enjoy it you guys are gonna love them we all do uh yeah go check them out welcome back to this segment part of the show two new ones 
Uh, I hope we do more of these, both of the segments we're about to do. I mm-hmm. think these are good ones. Uh, first, we're going to review two movies that we all saw together recently, kind of. And <laughs> then after that, we'll do the Mount Rushmore of sports nicknames. Uh, thanks, it's part of my take, um, obviously, for their ideas for Mount Rushmore's. They did mention the other day that, uh, I think it was on their Friday episode, this past Friday, that they mentioned that they kind of took Mount Rushmore from somebody else so that like, mm-hmm. if people do it, they kind of feel okay with it, which when I heard that, I was like, all right, we got to... Yeah. So I looked up if they had sports nicknames once. I don't think they do. They have baseball names, which, interesting. We maybe one day break mm-hmm. those down, maybe in October. Yeah. Who knows? But uh, so shout out to part of my take for, I guess, you know, giving people the idea and putting on a, a major stream, I guess. So, um, all right. But first, two movie reviews. First, we will do Twisters. Came out last week. Glenn Powell, uh, among others, um, about tornado obviously a bunch of tornadoes hitting in oklahoma so if you haven't seen it uh, i guess listen to the reviews we'll try not to spoil i guess too much yeah. but uh go ahead are you at the floor i guess for this first one yeah so uh i i really enjoyed it i mean going into it uh what i had heard from everybody uh was satisfying and i would say that definitely hits the mark on how the movie was uh when comparing to the original the original obviously clears the original is something that's like a historical feat in movies on like just a CGI level as well as just a storytelling way. But uh, if I had to rank it out of five stars, I think I gave it in my head, I'd say about three and a half. I think it was, I, it was a really impressive movie to watch. It's just, that's the first movie that I said it before we went into there and I agreed with myself afterwards that I felt like we were about to see for the first time in a while like a blockbuster movie that really lives up to its hype and has that, thrill to it that everyone kind of enjoys and it's just a spectacle to watch uh i think all the performance in it were pretty good i only had like a few gripes about it like i think in the beginning like my biggest gripe was it kind of put me off for a little bit it kind of went away as the movie went on but this kind of like supernatural connection with the weather was kind of weird like it wasn't a scientific thing she like looked at clouds and was like the updraft is moving i'm like you can't you can't tell that just by looking at it um, but yeah, all, I, all the performances are good. Liked Anthony Ramos in it. Um, <laughs> my boy from uh, Hamilton. Um, but you know, 90% of the movie is just Glenn Powell looking into the distance, looking sexy. Like that's like, it's just like, what should we do for this scene? We don't know how to space it out. Let's what make him walk in the rain in a white shirt and a cowboy hat. Yeah. It's like, they're going to love that. Ain't no love. <laughs> no love. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, I mean, every... Every single boyfriend in America lost aura points <laughs> going to that uh, movie because he was just like, I'm hot and I also know weather and I'm also like a meteorologist and I also like can like dance really good and like I know people at a rodeo and it's like, dude, like I don't know. what to, He's probably also like really good with kids. Like I don't know what else to tell you. It's just like every every boyfriend lost those points. Uh, but all in all, I do. I did really enjoy it. It was a really big spectacle. Uh, could have felt like it could have been a little darker in the middle. Like, I don't know. The ending was super like real, like, uh, how like serious that was. And I only, I saw a TikTok the other day that said like it showed in that scene, like the ending scene that an actual tornado ripped through like right next to him. So everything like was like perfectly set up to look like it just got hit by a tornado. So that was really cool. But yeah, those are my thoughts on twisters. Uh, I'll let you go for the next one. Kaden. Oh, yeah. We got quick, quick notes. Uh, <laughs> first 15 minutes of the movie, pretty interesting. The rest of the movie, couldn't tell you. <laughs> Paid a good chunk of change to take a little nap in the movie theater. Mm-hmm. If I were to give it a rating, though, from the maybe 17 minutes I watched total, I got, I, I'll give it a, I said three, I think. So, yeah, yeah I don't, it, it, it wasn't happening that night. I, I, I still have no idea how you weren't. How, how you slept, like not s- only because of how loud the movie was in general, but also your body was at a complete 90-degree <laughs> angle uh, hanging off the other side of the seat, and I don't know how you were able to maintain that. I was I was tired. Yeah. I w- remember waking up at one point in the movie, and like it was in the middle of a tornado, and yeah. spoiler alert, people die in tornadoes. <laughs> so it was, you just woke up, damn, yeah, crazy. I was like, yeah, though people were getting sucked in the tornado, and I literally was like, damn, that's crazy, and just fell back asleep immediately. Yeah. It was a long night. It, I mean, to yeah. be fair, it was like 1030. Yeah, it, was it probably movie. didn't even start till like 11. Mm-hmm. So, like, it yeah. was pretty rough, and 
There was a tornado going on outside pretty much. Yeah. It's, Apparently, it's I like l- loved the first one when I was a kid. So I wish I could have watched it. R.I.P. Bill Paxton. But three stars. Three stars. Um, I guess my thoughts on Twisters. Uh, I think I gave it a three and a half out of uh, five on Letterbox. Uh, I believe my, you can't do like 3.2 or three. It just has to be like three and a half. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think I gave it like a 3.2 in real life, which is not a bad thing. Uh, it's that's above average, a, a decent amount above average. Um, <clears throat> the my main complaint was with Anthony Ramos. Mm. Uh, I did not like him at all in, in the movie. That was just my opinion. Uh, other people said he was great. Uh, their opinions also, you know, matter. So uh, it's just my opinion. So it doesn't have to be <laughs> taken into value. But uh, Glenn Powell was Glenn Powell. I mean, he's on a run to become probably vice president in the next like six years so yeah. uh, maybe even the actual president uh he's been in three of like the top five movies that have grossed this year ridiculous um people lost relationships that night after <laughs> glenn yeah. powell was shown on screen uh yeah, i mean he's an incredible actor too uh the i think her name is daisy something she was great in that movie besides the fact that you didn't really like the supernatural thing but i don't think that was really on her more than no, the yeah, script no, writers no. Um, but I thought she was a great actor or actress. Um, and then, yeah, the soundtrack, obviously amazing. Uh, I wish they kind of integrated a couple of the songs on the soundtrack more in the movie. Like um, in the movie we're about to talk about, the soundtrack was very prevalent. Mm-hmm. And for, I guess, just like a couple of the songs, Ain't No Love in Oklahoma with Luke Holmes, you got to only hear... 45 seconds max of the song Mm -hmm. wasn't a great scene by the way so if you guys do see i think you'll agree but um like the tyler Childers song uh song while you're away or something like that you heard it for like maybe 10 seconds and it was in the most background noise ever yeah it was playing in a car it sounded like it was playing in a car three cars down (laughs) yeah and it and the windows were rolled up. yeah and the windows were rolled up and (laughs) yeah no it was uh that was like one of my only complaints though it was a great movie uh i didn't see the uh, first Twisters movie at all, so I didn't really think I needed to, but maybe that's on me. Uh, but uh, <laughs> other than that, yeah, I thought it was a great movie. I loved like seeing the realisticness, I guess, yeah. of tornadoes and mm-hmm. how much sadly they destroy like you know people's lives and that stuff's sad. Mm-hmm. And so kind of put it in like a movie perspective where people get to enjoy the movie, but also you have thoughts about how those kind of affect people's lives. It's yeah. kind of a cool, you know. Uh, a way that movies make you think I guess mm-hmm. is an easy way to put it because I've never really been in that kind of experience and does it make me never want to go to Oklahoma yes <laughs> but <laughs> does it make me like also feel like sympathetic for a lot of people that lose their families and you know their houses in tornadoes oh hell yeah so mm-hmm. uh, but the movie was great uh, I think yeah three and a half I'll keep it at that so um, I guess if we want to go to, oh and real quick they did break uh, I guess a huge record um, they were only supposed to be projected at like 120 million, uh, 154 million domestically over uh, this past Sunday. So after two weekends, Damn. so 154 for that kind of movie is pretty good, and that's yeah. just domestic. And it was 220 million worldwide. So, and the budget was only reported at 155 million. So that's impressive that it looked like that on that budget. Already made their money back, so mm-hmm. can't complain with that. So, uh, any other notes? No, nah, I mean it was just. Really solid movie experience. If you haven't seen it, I recommend you do go see it. In IMAX. In IMAX. That's the best viewing experience for, I'd say, any movie, no matter what. I think no matter what you're seeing, IMAX is definitely the way to go. Yes, sir. Sleeper of a movie. That (laughs) that sounded like an IMAX plug, not sponsored, but hey. I I liked your pun. He he said sleeper of a movie. Uh, Yeah. He fell asleep. (laughs) 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 Ha (laughs) ha. Paid $22 to fall asleep. Terrible. I'd do it again. (laughs) Uh, all right, the next movie, maybe the biggest movie of the year so far, mm-hmm. uh, Deadpool and Wolverine. We went and watched that this past Sunday at a normal hour, so people didn't have to fall asleep. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just early in the afternoon. Uh, and Deadpool. also, the seats were more normal, so yeah. uh, Caden would have had to get real familiar with somebody <laughs> to pull off that <laughs> sleeping. <laughs> it would have been me. It would have been me or some random guy on his right, so yeah. uh, thank God he didn't do that. <laughs> uh, Deadpool and Wolverine, blasting past $500 million in global box office today. So I guess the over the weekend and two extra days, five hundred million dollars already uh, worldwide. So, uh, your thoughts on the movie? Uh, I know, kind of your thoughts, but tell people. Yeah, um, you know it's it's pretty rare to see a movie 
that has as much hype as this did and then per go past that and this one did that with flying colors um i this is the first marvel movie in a while that i've gone into completely blind other than the first trailer that they released um i just i was so tired of walking into these marvel movies and these be like breakdowns of uh trailers that i would watch they just nail it and then that kind of luster would kind of be lost this one i had no idea uh we're gonna keep it spoiler free because it just came out but um every every cameo that came out was insane uh they did a great job portraying all of them they were all so funny everything was well timed it's up th- i think it maybe is the funniest one oh, yeah. out of all yeah. three of them by like a, a good bit yeah. um uh ryan reynolds just kills it as deadpool i mean that that character was made for him after especially hearing all the things about like the beginning of him as deadpool he wanted to go back to it cuz he played it in earlier x-men movies but it was kind of stupid. It didn't look good. Um, but then it, it came out, and I heard about that. that he would like he was leaking scripts, and he did a test footage and sent it to Fox, and then made them leak it. So then it just picked up traction. So it really is like his his baby, yeah. and you can definitely tell how much he really cares about it. The movie is extremely funny. It's a must watch. If I could go four point seven five, I think I'm gonna do that. I think no movie's perfect. Uh, or I mean, some are, but it's very rare. But this is just about as close as you can get to being perfect and being funny and also quick humor and also real in a lot of points about mattering as a person and finding what makes you happy and making sure everyone around you is happy and healthy and all that. So I think uh, Hugh Jackman, great job. Uh, all the characters they brought into it, I didn't feel like we need to see more of them before that. Like if I just saw a snippet of something of Hugh Jackman as Wolverine going into it. Like, I never really watched all the X-Men movies like that, but I felt like when I saw Hugh Jackman on the screen, he portrayed it so well that I didn't feel like I needed to. I felt like I knew everything I needed to know about him just based off his performance there. So, uh, yeah, I'll give it a 4.75. Uh, you said movie of the year so far. I think it is movie of the year. Good. Made it through this one, thankfully. Uh, amazing. I don't think there was this, like a single point in the movie where I was like bored or was wanting something more. Like you said, like it hit every point I w- hoped it could have hit. And even though I don't think I expected it to hit that hearing about the movie, I don't know why. Mm-hmm. The Wolverine Deadpool mashup to me just seems so strange. And I didn't know how that was going to fare. And I think they knocked it out of the park. That movie was absolutely amazing. I was laughing for 90% of the time. Yep. The superhero, the superhero aspect. I mean, who doesn't love superheroes? So, and it's Deadpool. So, I, ooh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go four point five. We're gonna keep it even. Four point five, killer movie, must see. <coughs> yes, uh, must see movie. Uh, I think that's the first thing I'll start with. Yeah. Uh, I'll start with mine. Mine was, uh, I think I put it at four point six. Great score. I mean, four point six out of five. Again, only a couple movies in deemed in everybody's minds are perfect. Uh, this one was as close as almost you can get to being perfect. Everything from the opening scene, amazing. Yep. Uh, the soundtrack, awesome. Amazing. I literally had to, we had to get in this car and listen to Iris the second after we got out of the movie. Yep. That's the only spoiler I'll give you. Uh, other than that, just the soundtrack's perfect. The breaking the fourth wall, I think that's a very commonly known Deadpool thing. So yeah. I, don't, that's, I don't really feel like that's giving away too much. Uh, the way they broke the fourth wall in that movie, uh, perfect. Yeah. Uh, the comedy in there, amazing. Like it, they were just throwing jabs at anything that you kind of think of in Hollywood and kind of the stuff that's going around there right now. Yeah, like they throw they throw a mention of Hugh Jackman and divorce yeah. mm-hmm. when he got divorced while the movie was filming. Yeah, yeah. it's it's insane. <laughs> like what they did was incredible. Like I was so happy. I told everybody that I was with when a movie can give you the emotion of oh shit that was cool oh shit that was funny and oh shit I'm about to cry all in the same movie Mm -hmm. that's what a good movie is all about and I got all three of those emotions by the end of the movie the Jimmy V effect the Jimmy V yes exactly yes if you can do that one day in life you're you're living every day so uh, I thought it was incredible Uh, again they're at 500 million by tonight Mm -hmm. Uh, it shows how incredible it is I was not expecting it to be I guess maybe not as good. I don't want to put it like that. I just didn't know what I was going to expect. This blew my expectations out of the water. Not going to lie to you. Uh, yeah, I have really not much else to say besides you have to go watch this movie. Yeah, no, it was really awesome, especially uh, a big 
big part. It's not really a spoiler. Big part of the movie takes place in the TVA, which is extremely explored in Loki. And I love how like all the things that happen in that kind of filter into this in just a little bit. Not so much that it takes over the story at all, but just enough to the point where if you're a little bit of a Marvel nerd, you're going to get a real, real kick out of this movie. Yeah. If you've watched a lot of the movies and, and know a lot of the people, you're going to love it. Love it. I My last note will be Hugh Jackman. Incredible. Uh, what His whole performance was incredible. Mm-hmm. Like you said, the cameos in there, great. And then I've always loved Ryan Reynolds, but this just gave me an even new loving for Ryan Reynolds. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I've I've loved him since watching The Proposal, which great, you know, two different types yeah. of movies, but so great. Uh, he's always been amazing, and this just put like a whole new level of mm-hmm. maybe even like superstar. I mean, he's already been superstar, one of the biggest stars yeah. and funniest stars in all of Hollywood, but this one solidified it for me. Like he's at the top of the list now yeah. with. Uh, good name of guys and and girls so Mm -hmm. uh, incredible Uh, go watch if you haven't Um, and yeah we'll hopefully get a couple more movies under our belts in the next month or so and then we will maybe do a couple more so all right this time again shout out part of my take Uh, we are going to draft Mount Rushmore of uh, sports nickname so Mm -hmm. I'm spinning a wheel obviously everybody knows a Mount Rushmore is four people four picks um, so we're going to spend wheel four to decide who's first. One. Yeah. Oh, okay, go ahead. Just so you know. This couldn't get decided earlier, so I'm letting God decide. <laughs> and God has decided. Ooh, it was close. Jackson. Hey. Jackson's got the number one pick. So you're going to go. We'll just go in order yep. this way. Jackson, you, me. Yep. Cool. And then you get two picks, and same when it get back, gets back to you. So Perfect. Uh, real quick, yeah, if anybody. Uh, doesn't know in Mount Rushmore is we're just drafting uh, four picks, obviously, a Mount Rushmore, of what we think are the best sports nicknames. Um, these could get a little contentious, and we're going to have you vote on Instagram. So go do that once you listen to this. Uh, Jackson, your first pick. Yeah, so when we first started talking about this, uh, it's the first one that popped into my mind. I think it's one of the cooler ones of all time because it really just it not only talks about his play, but also talks about his off-field stuff as well. I'm going with with the Minister of Defense for Reggie White. Uh, I think that is really up there on top uh, because you know because he did all the stuff. He he did all the stuff uh, off the field with his church and stuff like that. So that really led the way for that. And also, he was just a dog on the field. So that's where I'm going with with my first pick. Great, Great yeah, great pick. Um, My first pick. We're gonna go golf here. And no, you might be thinking Tiger, even though I hope you guys know that's not Tiger's real name. We we talked about this. Eldrick. Yep. Eldrick uh, Woods. But we decided not to go with like, you know, Tiger Woods or Shaq instead of Shaquille O'Neal, stuff like Penny. that. Penny Hardaway stuff. Yeah, you guys get it. Uh, so my first one, one of the best golfers, uh, Castle Pines Golf Club legend, Jack Nicklaus, the Golden Bear. That's going to be nice. my pick. Rock with it, rock with it. I, you know what? You get two picks. Yeah, I know you guys really left it open for me. <clears throat> so, I'm not I'll, for number one. Ooh, <laughs> it's crazy because I'm gonna I was gonna say the Bean, but I'm taking the Black Mamba, Mr. Kobe Bryant. Good pick. Number two, we're going controversial. Okay. And I'm going straight for historical val- value to this, Ornthal James, OJ, Juice. the Juice Simpson. Yeah. Damn. That's my number two I pick. The Juice is. High. Loose. Uh, yeah, the juice is uh, actually no longer loose. <laughs> Shout out to episode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, good pick. I, I knew once you said that you were going to go, OJ. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, well, I have a couple on my list. I'm going to go with, I think I can get that one later. You guys took two off my list, so good job. Uh, I'm going to take one. I think this will play great. Uh, Broadway Joe Namath. Mm-hmm. One of the like that. best nicknames of all time, not yeah. for any reason besides Broadway being th- that Hollywood at that point, and it was in New York. So mm-hmm. pretty cool. Broadway, Joe Namath. All right. I am with my second pick. I think this one is pretty dope just because I think it transcends the sport that he plays and goes into all sports in general. I'm going with the great one, Wayne, Wayne Gretzky. Gretzky. I was on my list as well. Yep. And then Fuck. do I go again? Yes, you do. You got all right. Whew. This one's tough. But I am going to go with the biggest man to ever walk on a football field. I'm going with the fridge, William yep. Perry. The refrigerator. The refrigerator. Oh, yeah, great. I was also on my list. My, my, <laughs> list, is, my, very list, my list is very long. Um, all right. Oh, this is tough. 
once we go next round, uh, we'll go like the next time we do this, we'll go one, two, three. And then the next third time we do it, we'll go one, two, three. Uh, just so we, we even it out. Um, all right. I am in a pickle. Yeah. I have two I really want to go. Mm-hmm. Pick one of mine. Well, so actually, I, I have like choice. four I want to go. I'm going to go. I don't know how this one will play on the graphic for the people that vote for this, but maybe I'll learn from this mistake. One of my personal favorites, Phil Jackson, the Zen master. Yep. Uh, I thought just the last dance just proved it all that the Zen master was one of you know the best mm-hmm. nicknames of all time. And the way he was able to control all of his players, and all the egos on that team and win six championships, uh, the Zen must have been uh, really clean. So yep. Zen master, Phil Jackson. Ooh, I got two right. Yep. Okay. These okay. are your final two. All right. Ooh, this is tough. I got a big list and I got a lot of names I like on here. Um, all right. I'm going Dion, Primetime Sanders. Mm-hmm. Obviously now making his way into a Colorado <laughs> legend. So <laughs> and then I'm stuck. Mm. All right. And then I'm going Hakeem the Dream Olajuwon. Hakeem the Dream. Nice. Uh, I was really, I didn't. I wasn't thinking highly of that one. I don't know why. The Dream. I, like I know it's a good nickname, but I was like, I, on once now, I was looking bro. at these lists, I, I was like, damn. I might regret my decision in that one, but we'll we'll name off some uh, what he calls some honorable mentions oh, yeah. at the end too. So, yeah. um, and with my last pick, oh my gosh, this is tough. I'm think I'm gonna go with. Andre Karolinko, AK-47. Yeah. Uh, one of the best 2010 role players ever for the Utah Jazz. I mean, if that if you know that, that's just a great pull. AK-47, what what cooler of a fucking nickname can you get? So, true, true. Uh, Andre Karolinko, AK-47. All right, this is my last one. This is your last pick. Yeah. Uh, you know, I you know he comes to mind almost immediately. He goes by a lot of names. You got the uh, King of Crash, the Sultan of Swat. Yes, but sir. the one that I have stumbled upon that I think is maybe one of the greatest of all time, the Colossus of Clout. This is Babe Ruth. Yes. This is Babe Ruth. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. Babe Ruth, the Colossus of Clout, something <laughs> that is <laughs> so, insane. that carries over generations. Yeah. That when you hear it as somebody my age, you go, I didn't even know Clout was a word <laughs> yeah. back then. I didn't think it held the same thing. It didn't. You just made this up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think uh, Colossus of Clout. I think that's that's peak. Cool. Okay, I'll give you guys my yeah. my honorable mentions real quick. Uh, I won't do all of them, but some of my favorite that I wanted to put on this list: uh, Mr. October, Reggie Jackson. Yeah, I thought that was huge. Uh, uh, what else did I have? Uh, the Big Unit, Randy Johnson. That one I really wanted. Uh, mean Joe Green for obvious yeah. reasons. Uh, the Joker didn't think it would play, but shout out Nicole Jokic. Um, I had the great one. I had Money Mayweather. Mm. Megatron, I thought was huge. Yeah. I thought I wanted to put that one as well. And then Iron Mike Tyson. Yeah. A uh, couple of the ones I had that no one said. Um, oh, also, sorry, real quick. Ted Williams, old baseball player. Teddy Ballgame. Yeah. One hard. of the hardest nicknames ever. No, that is hard. And then Sean Marion, The Matrix. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the Round Mound of Rebound, Charles Barkley. Mm. Sir, Charles. Sir Charles. Sir Charles, yeah. Sir Charles, yep. Yeah. Uh, big sexy Bartolo Colon. Yep, yeah, he's awesome. I think one that was right on the chopping block for me was Pistol Pete Maravich. Yeah, I had that one too. Uh, that one, and then uh, the human highlight reel, Dominique Wilkins. Dominique Wilkins. The one that I really was stuck on, which I don't think a lot of people think of whenever you think immediate sports nicknames, but during his time, Beast Mode, Marshawn mm-hmm. Lynch. Mm-hmm. I didn't yeah. think of that one. That was a good one. Yeah, uh, that was the one that hurt me. Um, Real Deal Holyfield, Real that deal. one's hard. Mm-hmm. Uh, Swaggy P, always for me. And I think the last one, got to give it to him because he's got two. Kevin Durant, Slim Reaper, Slim or Reaper so Easy Money so Sniper. I'd Slim rock Reaper. with both of them. I need and think the obvious, yeah. pick from the French Lick. Pick from the French Lick. I was just thinking of one. that I, Why can't I remember it? A- Pudge. Eric Jordan. Pudge Rodriguez. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, Big Horny, Eric Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Fire nickname. <laughs> no hate, no hate, no game, you know? Big Horny. Uh, There's lots of them out there. There's oh, so yeah. many. Yeah, maybe we could go on for hours. Well, c- comment if we missed one and you thought of one. Also, comment if you liked the Mount Rushmore. Um, and then we'll put on Instagram, uh, go vote. I think we'll just put on, I'll either post it and do a poll or a story in a poll. We'll see. But 
be on the lookout for that come Friday. I'll post that Friday uh, so you guys have a day to watch this. Um, and then we'll just keep track of whoever wins throughout the year, just mm-hmm. like Pardon My Take does. So, um, But, yeah, other than that, thanks for watching. Go uh, subscribe, follow, all that stuff. Uh, again, like, comment, uh, tell a friend, be a friend, tell a friend, tell a family member, uh, do all that good stuff. Uh, go buy Verb Energy Bars. Uh, use code ROCKSOL, 30% off. Uh, that helps us out. Uh, we really appreciate it. We have some more on the way soon. Um, they are actually very good. We did try them. Uh, very solid. I think you guys would actually be impressed. Yeah, I was actually big fan of the uh, banana bread and the, very good. the chocolate chip cookie. Is it the cookie dough? Or yeah, yeah, chocolate chip a, cookie. It's dough. like one of the more unique textures I've ever had on a like energy bar or anything like that. But and it I wasn't think bad. When you think about it, you think dry and kind of like super chewy. This is actually a very solid. Yeah. And we won't say this isn't an ad because it is an ad. Uh, so Show go, is. Go, go, go get those. Uh, we appreciate the support. Uh, we'll be back next week. I won't be here, but the maybe even mini Skeleton Squad will hold it up. Uh, mm-hmm. we'll, have to get, we'll have to get Saul or Hunter. Yep. Hunter's on vacation. Uh, much deserved. Saul yep. uh, also uh, at home <laughs> <laughs> uh, relaxing. So uh, it's all good. Um, but, yeah, uh, thank you guys for all the support. Um, go tell somebody you love them. You might just make their day. Peace. Peace. Peace.